Well, today we're going to take a look at the Johan Sverdrup field. It's the third largest field in Norway after a Statfjord and Ekofisk. We've done a video on Ekofisk. Uh, there'll be a link at the end. But uh, please uh, enjoy. So the Johan Sverdrup field is located here. It's in sort of an unusual location because this is the uh, the failed triple junction here. So the central graben, the Murray Firth, and all the way uh, the Viking graben up here to the north. And the uh, Johann Sverdrup field is actually offset from this uh, graben margin. And there's a high in between the margin and the field itself. And we'll have a look uh, in a bit more detail. On this map here, you can see the high here, the Yotsira or Haugaland high. And uh, you can see on one side the Edvard Grieg field, which used to be known as Luno, and uh, over here the Johann Sverdrup, which had alternate names in the past, and we'll go on to those later. So here's a structure map at top basement. It's a two-way time map, and it basically shows in black the outline of the Johann Sverdrup field. And here you can see it abuts the Haugaland High. There's a half graben in here, and it uh, basically thins out and up onto the Alvernus High here in the east. And, of course, what's interesting really about the field is that it's got the high to the west, and yet somehow that's still been sourced, and it looks like it's actually been sourced from the graben in the extreme west through sort of fractures in the basement uh, to actually fill the feature. Here's a seismic line which really shows the Viking graben and getting mature source rocks in this region here and a migration up into uh, Edvard Grieg here and you can see an old water contact and it's shown that this contact here goes through this basement horst. This is the Haugaland High and this is the Johann Sverdrup field on the other side. So here's the Hof graben here with Triassic and Permian section and then we'll see in a minute that we actually have the, the sands here are Jurassic in age. So the reservoir depth for the field is around about 1,900 metres. So a few more maps here showing the structure map of the field in a little bit more detail. And you can see here, there was a discovery here. Alvarnes was uh, the name of the discovery on the east. And Aldus or Aldus Major was uh, the name of the discovery on the western flank. But ultimately, it was uh, determined that these both had the same oil water contact. Discovered back in 2010 with well 1626, and a development plan was submitted in 2015. Now, this is a great cross section here. It's from a, a Lundin presentation, and you can see this is the oldest major south here, Alvarnes over here, and you see these were seen as two sort of culminations, but in time, the oil water contact here at 1,922 metres it goes right across the area here. You can see that the major reservoir is in the Jurassic sand. It's overlain by the Drautner Shale, which is the Kimmeridge clay equivalent in the Norwegian sector. And you can see the underlying Triassic and then the Rotligans of the Permian underneath that in this half graben here. So if we look at the reservoir in a little bit more detail here you can see it thickens and thins as it goes across but the quality of it is particularly good it's uh, only buried to around about 1900 meters so it's it got fantastic properties you know highlighted here the 30 and 40 percent porosities you can see that some very very high porosities and permeabilities this is one one darcy 10 darcy and this is 100 darcy up here you rarely see that but Fantastic quality sands within the reservoir interval. Now there's also a Upper Triassic Statfjord group. There's a middle to upper Jurassic Vestland group. There's spiculites in the uh, Upper Jurassic Viking group. And there are some Permian Zechstein carbonates, all containing oil. But uh, the major reservoir for the field is, of course, the, the Upper Jurassic. So this is a great reference paper if anybody wants any more information. I used to work with Arol Jostat, so shout out to him. Hope you're doing well. And this is a, a great source of information. There's the hyperlink at the bottom to the uh, PDF. Now, some details. Well, we'll leave you to look through those. Pick out uh, First Oil 2019. It's in a water depth of 115 meters. Operator is Equinor. And it is powered from the shore. So uh, it's anticipated that across the... The life of the field, the carbon footprint, the emissions will only be some 
uh, 0.7 kilograms of CO2 per produced barrel. And that's what's been quoted. So 48 slots available on the drilling platform. We'll have a look at the infrastructure in a second. And the oil is exported to the Mondstadt terminal. The gas goes to Carsto and uh, the oil gravity 29 API. So this is what was put in place here and up and running back in 2019. You can see there are four platforms here. It's got living quarters, uh, the processing platform here, the drilling platform, and then a riser platform. And that's because there are a number of uh, subsea wells that get tied back in through the riser platform. The drilling platform has got the 48 slots for dry trees. Then in 2022, a fifth platform has been added. This is part of the phase two. And in 2023, basically the news is that uh, production has been ramped up and it's been increased. So now it can maintain a, a plateau. Production to date, some 92 million barrels. With a target recovery factor of 70%, we're looking at an ultimate recoverable reserve of some 980 million barrels. So it, it's pretty much a, it's in the giant category. Production capacity, well, that now stands at three quarters of a million barrels of oil per day. Here's our entry for uh, Johan Svedrup. It's from our trove, Norway North Sea. And you can see we've got huge amounts of information. You'll recognize some of the material here we've taken to use in this video. We've got every field and discovery, like the click of the mouse for the North Sea, Norwegian Sea, and the Barents Sea. In fact, we've got every sea worldwide. Now here's the uh, production data for the field from the MPD fact pages. And really, as the field has been ramping up and getting onto plateau, not an awful lot to see. Uh, it hasn't gone into its uh, decline phase yet. But this is a little misleading. Uh, it looks like water's ramped up and there's been significant water breakthrough. But it's only when you look at the relative size of these bars that you see actually it's a very low water cut, only 0.3%, which could be one or two wells. Nothing too concerning at this stage uh, in the day, which is great news. We'll be uh, bringing updates on this as the field progresses over the years. So uh, watch this space and come back to the channel for an update. Now, there are lots of videos available out there on YouTube. Here's just a selection of them, but they tend to concentrate on the, the project phase or indeed on the production facilities. There really isn't one like this, which looks at the, the subsurface and the geology, the geophysics and the reservoir engineering. So we thought it would be a video of interest to people looking at Johann Svedra. So a massive great find, and not in small part down to this gentleman here, Hans Christen Ronovig, a fantastic, fantastic individual, great guy. I was privileged to work with him for uh, some time back in the uh, London days, and he was truly one of the great explorers. So uh, Hans Christen Ronovig.